Hello again viewers, Benidorm, six days, how much did it cost? We had some shockingly good deals on this one and watch until the end and we'll cover the Mallorca trip costings as well, how exciting and we'll talk about this, how exciting. Okay viewers, need to get the reading glasses on, let's go through the flights and the hotels. Thank you so much for all your support, if you've watched the Benidorm videos, uh, there was a lot of them. Mallorca videos, there was quite a lot as well and um, next trip coming up soon, we'll talk about that maybe later, we'll wait and see. Let's go, I need to get the glasses on. One pound from a pound shop or it might have been a pound fifty, home bargains, not sure. I get a million pairs because I keep losing them all, it's terrible. Anyway, let's go. So Benidorm, six days, flights were booked with Ryanair and EasyJet. Quite a lot of people asked, Kevin, who do you prefer flying with? The honest answer is, anybody that will get me there, I don't care. Um, I have a slight preference for Jet2 and Tui because their baggage allowance is more generous. Ryanair and EasyJet are definitely stricter with hand luggage and um, no real preference really who I fly with. This one was Ryanair and EasyJet. The flight out was £79.99. And the flight back with EasyJet was £71.43. And uh, check out the airport video I've shown you what Alicante Airport is like as well. They were booked through Skyscanner. I always check the prices on skyscanner.net and then I book directly with the airline. Sometimes you will get extra discounts if you book in their app. At the moment, too, I've got an extra 10% off flights. If you can get their app working, you'll actually get a discount, but it's very hard to get their app working. Um, I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, let's go through the hotels. I'll tell you my favourite one here. We stayed in five different hotels, I think, here in Benidorm. So I was moving about nearly every day. Quite exhausting, but quite good for the channel. Extra content. I think the first night we stayed in the Flamingo Beach. Four-star hotel. I wouldn't really class it as a four-star, more like 3.5. What do you think of this, Cap? Different one, eh? Um... £79 for half board this was, I think it was booked through the official website this one. The hotel was fine, I had no complaints, quite a nice quiet location, only under 10 minute walk from the strip, quite near the Wookie Hollow and a few other hotels that are quite well known there as well. Would I stay there again? Yep, I would stay there again. Did I think it was worth £79 half board? Maybe. Um, evening meal was okay. Breakfast was quite limited. I wouldn't say it was the best food I've had, but the room was quite comfortable. The hotel was nice enough. No complaints. I then moved around the corner, if you remember. Um, on the Saturday night in the strip, I was finding it really difficult to get accommodation under £100. Friday and Saturday night in Benidorm and the new town in the strip are very expensive. And I managed to get this wee Spanish hotel. I think it's called the, the Carbello de Oro. Round the corner from the Flamingo Beach and I just walked into the hotel. I seen it online with a few companies, but I actually just walked in and said, have you got a room? And they did, and it was 51 euros. Worked out about 45 pounds, and it included breakfast, which was very basic, more like a Spanish type breakfast, but how could I complain? What an absolute bargain it was. The room was very dated, but the hotel itself had character, it had charm, it was clean. I had no complaints. I would definitely stay here for one night if I was going back to Benidorm and staying near the Strip. I would consider it. Would I stay there for a week or two week holiday? Probably not. It's a bit, a bit too basic. But for one night, absolutely perfect. We then moved on to the Old Town. Benidorm Old Town is lovely. Check out all the videos I've done in Benidorm. you see a big variety between the New Town and the Old Town. I stayed at the NR Mirador del Castillo. Two nights here because I got lazy. First night, I think it was £29. Unbelievable. The, the price in this hotel was unbelievable. The rooms are quite modern. Um, they're pretty basic. They've got tiny balconies, most of them. Doesn't have a pool, but you're right next to the beach. If you've seen the video, I walked down to the beach in under two minutes. And it's a nice wee beach. A wee, the beach uh, down next to it. Stayed there the next night as well, and that was £30, I think. So an average of £29.50 per night. It was unbelievable. Um, I had a double room one night and it ended up in a single room another night. 
you would have seen a video of another double room that I accidentally went in, had to move. Um, but that room wasn't the best one, that was on the ground floor and it didn't have a wee balcony or a terrace. So the other rooms were better. The hotel's an absolute hidden gem, it's a bargain for that price. I would stay here every time I come to Benidorm, no problem at all. Then we moved on to the Flash Hotel. The Flash Hotel was £64 for bed and breakfast. It was booked through Booking.com. If you do a lot of bookings on Booking.com, Hotels.com, etc., you start to get big discounts. Hotels.com, you get free nights for every 10 nights that you book. I'll leave a link below if you want to sign up for Hotels.com. Rewards programs, absolutely free. Um, it helps the channel out a wee bit. So Flash Hotel, the room was pretty nice, balcony was nice overlooking the pool, I thought the breakfast was actually pretty decent as well, there was a slight incident later on when I come back to the room when they thought I hadn't paid for the room, I did talk about it more in a video which I took down, I've merged it in with the breakfast video, let's just put it down to there was a misunderstanding, it was very bizarre, um, would I stay in the Flash Hotel again, location is brilliant, next door to Morgan Tavern, down the road from the Western Saloon, across from Uncle Ped's, um, brilliant location. It had an atmosphere, the Flash Hotel. During the day, the entertainment's very busy on the terrace as well. So, would I stay there again? Yes. I would just make sure that they have agreed I've paid for the room before I come back at 2 and 3 in the morning and they start trying to ask for payment. To be fair, I shouldn't have lost the hotel room key. That was the first mistake that caused all the problems. But there you go. Then, the final night, we stayed at the Marina Hotel, which is bang at the start of the strip. Um, well known for the pool parties. It's absolutely jam-packed here for the Euros, especially the England games. It's got a really good pool, actually. Very good pool, big, massive screen. The bar's pretty good. They've done up the reception area, and they've done up some of the rooms. I wouldn't say it's a four-star hotel. It's more like a 3.5. Uh, some of the rooms, be careful, they don't have balconies or terraces. The one I booked was the cheapest. I knew it didn't have a balcony or a terrace. The cheapest price for the marina is always through their official website. Don't book with MDLs, so it's always cheaper through the official website. I paid £34 for a hotel on the strip, which was amazing value. I like the marina. Uh, would I stay there if I was going with my partner or for two weeks? No because it's Club 1830 land. You could be on a corridor full of hen and stag do's, and it could be noisy every night. So you're taking a bit of a risk in the marina, but if you get a nice quiet room, I actually quite like the hotel. If you're in the Western Saloon, or Morgan Tavern, or uh, Rockefellers, or any of the great bars round about in the Strip, then you're right next to the marina hotel, five minute walk, not far to go home, and it's a lot more affordable than some of the other hotels on the Strip as well. So, not for everybody, the marina, but what a deal, £34. So, total flights return were £151. The accommodation the hotels, they range really from a basic three-star up to a four-star hotel, and the uh, accommodation was £281. So the total for six nights in Benidorm, flights and hotels included, was £432, which I think is pretty good. I had no real complaints about any of the hotels. I would stay in every one of the hotels again for what I'm doing. And uh, what a great trip. Benidorm, one of my favourite places to go. I'll leave a link at the end to all the Benidorm videos up here if you want to check them out. I've done loads when I was there. You'll see all the hotels I stayed in as well. And thanks for your support watching the videos. A wee shout out, thanks to all the guys who have bought a coffee or they've bought the behind the scenes ebook, letting you know how YouTube works. I really appreciate all the support as well. But the most important thing, the videos are free to watch. And if you watch any of the videos, um, that helps the channel out so much. I can't do the videos without you guys watching. So thank you so much. Let's go on to Mallorca. Now remember when I went to Mallorca and I stayed in Calabona and I'd done a video and there was a guy selling these wee birds doing the most annoying noise in the world. Um, I think at one point the guy's been in Tenerife. Now, I come back from Mallorca and I met Fiona, sister-in-law, and she says, Kevin, I've got a present for you. I bought, brought back the wee bird. 
Let's check it out. It's really annoying, isn't it? <laughs> I'm glad I've got it for the video. So there's the wee bird there, okay? I'll make an appearance at some point else as well. Uh, there's the wee bird. Right, let's get into Mallorca. Flights return with Ryanair were £139. Now, I've noticed with Mallorca, flights are very, very cheap on the way out. I've seen flights for £20 out to Mallorca. I was tied in for certain dates, so I could only go certain days. But that's not too bad, £139 with Ryanair. Let's go on to the hotels. The first night, I stayed in the Globals Toro Novo Hotel, which is just off the Magalhaes Strip. Uh, the room was fine. The hotel was fine. It wasn't that noisy, considering where it was. Magaluf is quite expensive for hotels. This was £65. Um, was it worth that? It was by far the cheapest that night in that area. I did move to a cheaper hotel the next night. Next night, we moved round the corner because I was so lazy. I just took my bag and walked right round the corner to a hotel that I've stayed in before in Magaluf. It's right on the strip, next door to Mulligan's. It's crazy that family stay in this hotel. I would never stay in it um, unless I had a sea view room and I was on holiday. I've only stayed in it because I was doing videos. I had zero sleep, no sleep whatsoever in it because I had a room right at the side of the hotel, no balcony or terrace. Um, you'll see that on the room reviews. I'll leave a link to the Mallorca videos down there as well. I've done 57 videos in Mallorca. You'll see all my hotels. Flamboyant Carib was £55 for bed and breakfast and uh, I didn't even bother with breakfast, I had breakfast before in the hotel, I didn't think it was great so I have left a link to the breakfast video on the room review previously so you can check out the breakfast. It's quite a nice hotel inside, the rooms are quite nice, um, the staff are lovely, the views at the swimming pool are amazing, the front of the hotel looks right onto the beach, absolutely brilliant but when you have got a room at the back or the side, you're going to be on the strip next to Mulligan's. Noisy the whole night. I wouldn't recommend it for 7 or 14 days, to be honest with you. If you've stayed in a sea view room there before, let me know in the comments. Is it okay? Because I've still got my doubts a sea view room wouldn't get that noisy. But would I stay in it again? Probably if it's cheap enough, I would. But I wouldn't stay in it for a, a long-term holiday. Okay, so then we moved on to... Santa Ponza and the For You Miranda Hotel. It's a wee boutique hotel, adults only, five minute walk from the bus station, 10 minute walk from the strip in Santa Ponza. Um, breakfast was included and the breakfast was actually quite decent and an amazing wee hidden gem. £56, um, absolute bargain considering um, the price of other hotels in Santa Ponza. Would I go back there again? Definitely I would. It was a nice, quiet residential street and the hotel was quite quiet. Staff were lovely. They had a wee bar. Swimming pool was small but quite nice. Yeah, quite liked it. Recommend it. Okay, then we moved on to possibly the favourite hotel that I stayed in on this trip. The Calabona Hotel. Probably get the busiest hotel bar I've ever seen. Entertainment at night. Lots of maybe four or five hotels in Calabona have got pretty decent entertainment. I thought it was a nice wee resort and um, with a really relaxing night there. I seen the Beatles in one of the other hotels. Very good as well. Calabona Hotel, I pushed the boat out in this one, viewers. A bit more. We got breakfast and I did film the evening meal, although I didn't have a full evening meal. I just took a kind of wee nibble to see the quality of the food. It was actually very good, I thought. £81 for the Calabona Hotel. And I think that one was booked through lastminute.com, which I very rarely book any hotels through, but for some reason they were the cheapest. Would I stay in that hotel again? Absolutely. Uh, no faults with it whatsoever. Only thing is, it was a wee bit of building work in Calabona, and the room view wasn't great. It was looking over all the rooms at the back, so you don't have much privacy. So again, as with most of these hotels, depends what room you get. Would I stay in that room for 14 days? It was okay, but get a better room maybe. Okay, so finally, we went up to Alcudia. And they stayed in the Blue Sea Piscus, which was an absolute bargain. Down at the port area. The port area is quite nice. 
quite quiet at night, not many bars with live music. Up in the Bellevue Strip is a lot livelier, a lot more going on. But the Blue Sea Piscus was £39, which I thought was amazing value for Alcudia. Alcudia is quite expensive for hotels. Um, the Blue Sea Piscus is, a, I think it's a three star. When you walk into the reception area, they almost trick you thinking it's a really nice hotel. The reception area is lovely. The pool area is very small, but quite compact, quite nice actually, the pool area. Um, then you get to the lifts, and they're from 19 Canteen, and you get to the rooms, and the rooms are really, really dated as well, but they were clean, I had no complaints, I don't mind a dated room, and for that price, how could I complain? Would I stay there again a week or two weeks? Not so sure about that, because a few viewers told me the food's not great, I didn't have any of the food, so I'm not sure. But for one night, absolute bargain, £39. So let's combine the totals for Mallorca. The flights were £139. The hotels were £296. The total for the trip to Mallorca, five days for the flights and accommodation moving all around the island, was £435. Which I think is not too bad. I didn't stay in any terrible places. All the hotels are fine. So let me know what you think, viewers. Let's get the glasses off. Okay. So I've also got a wee YouTube t-shirt that tells you to subscribe and like, but I need to sort out the mirror image settings on a Samsung Galaxy S21 to show you this correctly. If anybody knows how to do this, let me know in the comments. This wee video here says like, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, it doesn't cost then hit the wee subscribe button down there. If you're enjoying the videos, give it a thumbs up. If you hate the videos, then give it a thumbs down as well. Either way, it makes no difference. It's all interaction. I'll leave a link to Benidorm and the Mallorca videos here. If you're interested in how to book cheap hotels, I've got another video which I'll leave a link up here, um, which I found in Benidorm, just letting you know the process of booking the cheap hotels. Sometimes they get really good deals, other times not so good. Bit of a mix in this one, but mostly I would say good deals. Mallorca for package deals is very, very expensive during the summer, so I was actually surprised at some of the deals I got booking hotels separately. When I was in Mallorca two years ago, um, it was a lot more expensive, I think, for hotels booking it separately than packages, so it's going to change a wee bit. Anyway, maybe I'll be back next year, not sure. We'll see how the videos do, they've done okay so far. Benidorm, definitely next year, we're we'll back again in um, one of my favourite places. Thanks for all support. It's goodbye from me and the wee birdie. How annoying is this? It's <laughs> <So> annoying. <laughs> anyway, I think you asked me how, how much you paid for this, what do you think? I don't know, I don't know how, how much it was. Um, thanks for watching the videos to the end, superstars. Next series coming up very, very soon. It might even be the next video. You'll just have to wait and see. I'm looking at flights as we speak on Skyscanner. It's Scottish school holiday, so it's pretty expensive to get away here. We'll find a deal somewhere. There's always a deal somewhere, always somewhere. Thanks for watching. See you next one.